Alaska, the last frontier. Bye, Cruz. Let's talk about Alaska and the things that we wish we knew before we took an Alaskan cruise. First section is all about the itinerary. Uh, we went in not knowing much, but we have learned through three cruises up to Alaska what you should do. And a fourth one coming. And a fourth one coming. We do love Alaska. So with Alaska, you can either do a round trip from Seattle, a round trip from Vancouver. You can do a one way, which usually goes to Seattle, to Seward. There are several options when booking an Alaskan cruise. You can also come Seward down to trip. Vancouver or uh, Seattle. Very true. Every Alaskan cruise stops in Canada because of the laws for maritime laws. And then everyone stops in Juneau and then the ports vary from there. Let's get into it a little more. So personally, I think one of the biggest things to make sure when you're looking at the itinerary is you're going to have a stop to go see glaciers. So you either have Hubbard Glacier or you have Glacier Bay. Or Dawes. Or Dawes Glacier. In our opinion, mm. I would say... If you're doing this one time in your life, yes, we would highly suggest booking something that has Glacier Bay on the itinerary. And that is because Glacier Bay is a national park and they have, what is it, nature people? What's the word I'm looking for? Rangers. Park. They have park. rangers. Nature, nature people. <laughs> they have nature people, come on. They, they have park rangers that actually come on board the ship and will give you some more information. You learn a lot when it goes to Glacier Bay and it's just, it's a lot more interesting. It's really cool to see the glaciers, but getting all that extra information is really interesting and good now, as well. This will sound funny because it goes against what we say later. Glacier Cruising Glacier Bay may be the, one of the most relaxing crew day, cruise days you will have, um, but still visually stimulating. Yeah, because you're sitting and you're looking. Like you're not going and playing basketball or doing bingo or like you want to be staring out that window the entire you day. You and everyone else. Yes. So <laughs> if you do that, make sure you get up early um, to get a good spot. In addition to looking at where the cruise line actually goes, I would also suggest you see how long you are in each port for. Yes. Because there are... We made this mistake our first time. First time? Well, no, second. second time was the very last yeah. minute book. But some of the larger ships don't stop in the ports for as long. Specifically Norwegian ships. That's the ones we've experienced. Yeah. So, and like with NCL, if you go to Ketchikan or Sitka, there is a bus that you have to wait. So you have to wait on a line to get on the bus. And then from the bus, it's about a 15 to 30 minute drive into town. So you just have to factor that in as well, like that you may be spending an hour to 30 minutes of just physically getting to and from the, like where you get off the ship to get to the actual yeah, town. Yeah, like if you're doing the Encore or the Bliss with Norwegian and you're going to Ketchikan, you usually get in around 7 a.m. You have to be leaving the dock at 1, 1.30, around there. So that doesn't give you a lot and of time. And the last bus leaves the city at like 11.45, something like that. Super early. Yeah, it, it doesn't give you a whole bunch so of time. So if you do an excursion in Ketchikan, that's basically all you're doing. Um, so you don't get to see the town. And I'll leave a link here. We did do a comparison with NCL with the two main stops that you would either do in the two different itineraries just so you can get a little bit more knowledge on that but i feel like checking out how long you're in each port is a huge plus to your alaskan trip especially if you're only doing this one time uh going to alaska is not a cheap um cruise you're not going to find a 119 dollar uh, three night trip to Alaska. It's gonna cost a little bit. You can find good options if you go in the beginning and the end of the season. So the season keeps expanding. Right now as we film this, it's starting in April and ending in October. Um, but if you go between April and early May, you can get a relatively good deal. And if you go after school starts in the fall, you can also get a good price. Now the only watch out is if you go early in the season or late in the season, a lot of the workers are seasonal in Alaska. So a lot of the places can be closed if you get towards the very end or very beginning of the season. And I would especially say towards the end of the season, possibly a little bit more than the beginning of the season. We were there the very end of September and a lot of places were like either already closed or they were saying they were closing like the first week of October. 
And there's still uh, granted, like three weeks of cruising left. Yeah, granted, you can still do October and there's still things open, but I would just keep that in mind that maybe some of it won't be open. This is about the budget still. Shore excursions uh, in Alaska can be really pricey. Um, there are some epic shore excursions you can do, whether it's helicopter or seaplane or fishing. They're all not cheap. I'm just going to be blunt there. Um, but there yeah. are some budget, uh, like, relatively fun ones that we typically do that are much cheaper than those really expensive ones. I would say those expensive ones that you're mentioning probably start around 500 a person and go up from there, just so you have, like, an idea. If you go with Norwegian, you get that $50 off. It really helps. <laughs> There are definitely some more budget-friendly ones that you can book through the cruise line. And there's also the option just to do it yourself and just go and explore. And I would also say price match some of those excursions that you might see the cruise line is offering. Like for example, Skagway. If you're looking to do the train ride in Skagway, the cruise line offers it, but sometimes it's more affordable to just book it on your by yourself. And usually the issue with booking things by yourself is if you're not back on board in time, they will leave without you. But if you're doing a train, half of the train are people from the cruise line. So they're waiting for them anyway. Yeah, but there's worse places to get stuck than Alaska. True. So like, mm, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> but there are some where I think you can also just book them on your own and just yeah. keep an eye out for pricing. But we are also planning on doing an episode on budget excursions in Alaska, so keep an eye out for that. All right, if you're expecting a cruise to be like a Caribbean cruise when you're going to Alaska, I am sadly to let you know that that is not how it is. Um, in Alaska, you are up and about, you're walking around, the excursions tend to be more like thrilling, active. active. Um, you can find some relaxing excursions, I'm not gonna lie, um, but it is a much more active cruise in the Caribbean. You're not gonna Sitting see... on a beach. Yeah, you will definitely want to ask <laughs> sitting on the beach. Um, but typically, like even during sea days, they can be rougher. You're not going to see as many people laying out in the sun beds on the decks. Now, people will, and people will also swim. And surprisingly, it can get warm in Alaska, and the water can get warm too. So you can swim, but it's not going to be like that relaxing, just sailing to the Bahamas or St. Croix or St. Thomas kind of cruise like the Caribbean offers. Yeah, and I think to piggyback on that, some of the ports you get in really early and depending on the ship line you're with, you may not have that long in port, so you may be getting up and getting off that ship right at 7 a.m. It's really tough so, for me. Which is really, really hard for me because I'm not a morning person at all. But you want to maximize the amount of time you have in town and seeing as much as you can. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's not going to be that like super chill, calm, It's relaxing. the last frontier. So yeah, you gotta get up, you gotta do stuff, you gotta see that last frontier, people! You're gonna be up north. What is the one thing that people want to see when they're up north? Me? The northern lights. Are they gonna see them when they're on this? Only if you're in the very beginning of the season or the very end of the season. And More lucky. like the end of the season and very lucky and want to stay up super late and keep your eyes out for it. But there is a possibility, especially in October, to see the Northern Lights, but the rest of the season, not so much, because it's just going to be sunny for most of the time, and the sun does not set till very late. I mean, even in May, we had the sun up until like 11, 11.30, so be prepared for it to be bright most of your trip. <laughs> All right, this is maybe the most surprising thing on our first Alaska cruise. And we mention it to people, and people have no idea. Oh, the, the southern portion of Alaska where you're cruising is actually a rainforest. So, uh, you hear about rain, it rains. That would be why, so make sure it's you a rainforest. Bring your, yes, make sure you bring your raincoat and your rain boots for the rainforest. Yeah, be prepared for rain. You will most likely have it at some point during your Alaskan cruise. Obviously, you can get lucky and not have rain, but you're probably gonna have at least some one day. Yep. So dress accordingly. And it can be really windy, so a lot of people carry an umbrella, but it's windy in the valleys um, where you usually port, and it doesn't help to have an umbrella. So a poncho or a nice raincoat is highly suggested. And also stay tuned, because we're gonna do a what to pack for Alaska as well, and shorts. we will definitely be saying raincoats. Surprisingly, shorts. If you're Jack, shorts. We're gonna show both extremes. <laughs> Another reason to not choose peak season to cruise to Alaska is they have the biggest mosquitoes I've ever seen in my entire life. They like to joke that it's the state bird. Yes, and they like 
palm of your hand size. They're, uh, they're not that, that big. big. <laughs> they're really large, though. So. They're big mosquitoes. They look that like, big. That's why I describe maybe it. Maybe Poppy's hand. Like a baby hummingbird, maybe, size? Like, that's pretty good, accurate, right? I don't know, but... They're everywhere. They're everywhere. There is a lot of them. And also, your, your peak seasons, which are June to August, tend to be the wetter seasons. So you're going to have more rain. It's not going to be as cold as the beginning and the end of the season, but... You're going to have more mosquitoes and you may have a lot more rain. So just keep that in mind if you're looking to book and price is an issue. Yeah, and if you're sweet like me, you know those mosquitoes love. Okay, so another thing to keep in mind as well as the itinerary is... This is probably the second most important thing to keep in mind. Yes. So after the itinerary and the places that you definitely want to make sure that you, you want to see is do some research on which cruise line you want to go with. Do you want more of the family friendly with a boatload of activities like Royal Caribbean or Disney or NCL if you have some older kids? Or do you want a more chill or relaxed? Do you want to do princess or celebrity? Or do you want to go on an expedition one? Yes, I do. I mean, we do. Those are, tend to be a little bit more expensive, but those would be a smaller ship. But it's an expedition to the last frontier. Hot. <laughs> Look at you it, tying would, it together. You would be in ports for a lot longer. You'd probably do, be doing some more crazy activities. Talk about strenuous. Yeah. Probably not as relaxing because you really are getting out there and seeing and doing as much. So just make sure you do your research on which line works for you and your family best. Yep. So like the lines that do, do go, just sum it up, is Disney, Royal, NCL, Celebrity, Viking, uh, Holland America, Princess, Princess, Silver Sea, um, I don't know, a bunch of them. You There's more, I'll part. make some more notes. You can <laughs> I'll list them here. So if you can make it work within your budget, we would suggest trying to get either a balcony or at least an ocean view, just because Alaska is so scenic. Unlike the Caribbean where, I don't know, it's mostly water that you're looking at, Alaska, I mean, until you get close to the islands. But for the most part, you're just looking at the ocean. Where Alaska, you are sailing closer to land and some of the views are just breathtaking, especially when you're going through the Inside Passage or you're going to any of the glaciers. Sometimes it's nicer just to sit on your balcony and watch the glaciers instead of having to go up and fight spa for space up at the top deck. It's just something to keep in mind when you're booking and trying to budget for this yeah but, but. <laughs> if it's not in your budget but an inside room is in your budget and that's your deciding factor whether or not you can make alaska work in an inside room to alaska will work because there are so many places to sit on the ship and enjoy the scenery yeah or if you're just like i want to do alaska but i want to do the helicopter ride i want to do the seaplane i want to go see bears then have your budget go towards that instead of your cabin yeah just remember alaska is about when you get there um, not so much the ship. In our opinion, it's about getting to Alaska. So one thing that may be a plus for you, but is not a plus for us, is um, just... And that surprised us big time. And surprised us super big, is that every port you will see Diamonds International, the jewelry stores you see in the Caribbean, kind of some of the very similar shops that when you see in a Carib Del Caribbean... Del Sol, like all of the yes. ones that are the touristy. So if that is your cup of tea, they definitely operate at every port. Or most ports. Yes, most ports. Not Icy Straight Point. And then same thing with souvenir shops. A lot of the souvenir shops are the same, kind of uh, all of them. They're pretty much owned by a big box company and they just have the different shops. But if you are looking for souvenirs and you want something that is more truly Alaskan. Alaskan made. Look for the seal that says Alaskan made and that will prove that it is made in Alaska. It's not made in China or overseas somewhere. It is your more authentic. Yeah, we'll put it right here. Now, if you're doing a round trip out of Seattle and you return back to Seattle, the port of Seattle actually does this amazing thing where if you've ever taken a cruise before, you typically leave your suitcases out the night before and they will pick them up and then you get off the ship and when you're going through basically customs, you find and pick up your bag. Kind of like an airport in a sense. But the Port of Seattle actually does this amazing thing where if you do that and you sign up for it, they will take your bags directly to 
the Seattle airport. And so you won't see them until you land in your final destination. And it costs the same amount as it would if you brought them yourselves to the airline. If you also have a frequent flyer miles where your bags are included, it's the same thing. And it's just a really great service that they offer so you can go and explore Seattle a little bit more once you get off the ship. So if you've liked this video, it's helping you out new to the channel. Uh, really like if you give it a thumbs up. And if you really enjoy our channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to keep up to date with our latest information. It means a lot to us. Yes, it does. So lastly, when you do an Alaskan cruise, you are seeing an itty bitty bitty portion of Alaska. First, obviously, it's all coastal towns because you're on a ship, but it's- No. <laughs> But it's also just the like southern tip of Alaska. You're really not seeing I never thought of that. so much of Alaska. So if you fall in love with it as much as we have, personally, I would suggest doing a land portion yourself. Whether you're more comfortable doing that with the cruise line or you do it by yourself, it's very doable to do by yourself, especially if you're willing to drive. Remember, Alaska is the U.S. It's just like going to visit any other state in the U.S. It's really not that hard to do the land portion on your own. When we did it the first time, we did a cruise first and then the land portion, and I may have fallen in love with the land portion more. Yeah. And so the cruise lines offer like a cruise tour, is what it's called. So you can do a land portion with them as well. Uh, we just wanted to let you know that you don't necessarily need to book that. You can actually do it more affordable if you do it yourself. Um, and you get to see more and you can time your own itinerary. Yeah, you get the freedom of doing it on your own pace, your own time, and exactly yep. where you want to go. But if you don't want to plan anything and you just want to do the cruise tour and let the cruise line plan for it, like it's a, it's a great experience. We've met several people that have done that and they enjoyed it. Um, With that, though, I would say try not to be in the beginning or end of the season. Yes. Because we did meet somebody who had done the beginning of the season and she had said a lot of restaurants weren't open and just things like that. So... That one I would really try and not be on the beginning or end of the season. In yes, the start but beginning. definitely go to the northern port uh, portion of Alaska and see the rest of the state. It is beautiful. Mount Denali is amazing. Homer, Seward. It's a completely different experience than the cruise. Um, I, say, I think the cruise to Alaska gives you a good snapshot of what Alaska is like. Um, but seeing the land portion, it gives you the full experience. Agreed. So... Till next time, get out and live a little. Bye guys. And I would say all Alaskan cruises have at least one stop in Alaska, not in Alaska. <laughs> oh, cruises yes. stop in Alaska. Yeah, yeah. Alaska cruises stop in Alaska. <laughs> that is really good information for the viewers. Really good. <laughs> <laughs>